It is the late afternoon of October 16th, 2023, Monday here in Toronto. This is a special bonus podcast version of Rook. I'm Gian Gomeshi. Hello to you from Toronto, from Canada. Salam dustan aziz duru bashama. This is the second week in a row, mm-hmm. Pega June. Yes, yes that, it is. Uh, you know, I don't usually say Pega June. I know. A lot of affection today. Yes. That we are giving you a bonus podcast. Let's call this episode 290. Point five, mm-hmm. because the last episode was 290. <laughs> yes. So this is point 0.5. You see, it's a bonus. Thank you for that. I'm explaining. I'm just <laughs> trying to bring you along. This is part of a new uh, tradition uh, of doing the Rook Monday roundup of events and issues with Pega and or a panel. So Mondays, we're just going to do the roundup. Um, um, Thursdays will be our regular show with interviews, with everything else we bring you. This is the roundup on Mondays. We're doing these as bonus podcasts until November after which they will be behind a Patreon wall, the Patreon wall. So we invite you to become a Rook member on Patreon. This is really simple. If you've never heard of this before, you just go to our website, rookmedia.com. You press the support us button. You have the joy of supporting us. And also (laughs) you'll be taken to our Patreon page. And for as little as five bucks a month, you can access our Monday shows starting in November and more bonus content and little surprises as well. Uh, So rookmedia.com and then support us if you want to become a Rook member on Patreon. We really appreciate it when you do, but no pressure, no taught off. If you don't want to, we're happy to have you out there and uh, back with our regular big edition of Rook on Thursday, which will always be available to everybody. Episode 290.5 today, the Rook Roundup, the Merjui murder, which of course we have to get to. Uh, The situation with Hamas, uh, meeting with foreign ministers of Iran, etc. A possible war, imminent war, and Calapoche. That definitely fits right in. Yes, which is, uh, I'll explain why that's in there as well. In studio, you can hear her voice. She's our regular Rook Roundup specialist and a producer. Hello, Pega. Hello. Also in the studio, an Iranian-Canadian innovation strategist, a designer who's been very active in the Iranian community here in Toronto, especially during the uprising of the last year. It's a pleasure to have Raha Ru here. Hello, hello, hello. Hello. Thank you so much for having me. Welcome. It's great to have you here. And um, hopefully already, I'm hoping for you to be here uh, um, a lot fingers crossed part of our uh, <laughs> I'd like that. roundup uh, team by the way innovation strategist very impressive title thank you no idea much. what it means <laughs> but very impressive i don't either it's like <laughs> on the kidding. bachelor when people have like marketing specialists and you find out that they <laughs> hand out things on a street corner i'm not sure what is an innovation specialist um, an innovation strategist is someone who basically um, works for different organizations or companies and um, tells them how they can use um, different, basically, ideas or different different strategies, different technologies that come a- out um, to their benefit. So, mm. for example, right now, AI is a big thing, and I'm sure everyone knows about ChatGPT, mm-hmm. you know, um, MidJourney, all of these. And um, what I do is I, I basically um, ideate, and I illustrate how... Um, these technologies or these ideas can fit into the landscape of a company or a business or, you know. Very lengthy answer. Thank you. More importantly, I like that your reference point was The Bachelor. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I've I've been known to. Yeah, I mean, I, but also um, (laughs) still not, still not a doctor and engineer, by the way. Innovation (laughs) strategist. I'm not sure where it fits in the hierarchy of proud Iranian parents. Do they understand innovation strategists? They are pretty proud. I, I hope <laughs> I hope they're proud. <laughs> but right. um, I didn't really give them a choice on that. Um, I'm pretty independent-minded. So, right. But they're okay. All right. We'll they hear some good. of that independence here. Yeah. Visiting from also at the table, visiting from London, he's a singer, a songwriter, an activist, a former Rook guest. You may know him from his one of his bands, Blurred Vision, also from his solo work. He has a brand new album out called Love Revolution. Sepp Osley is here in the studio. Hello, hello Sepp. Sir. Hello, hello. Again. An Iranian-Canadian boy. Yeah, Iranian Who is born. now in London. You've done the opposite of me. Yeah. <laughs> you, I grew up in London and came here. You, right. You've moved to the UK. Yeah. It's nice to have you in Canada. It's great to be here doing the... Uh, promotions for like you said the ep love and revolution uh did the london launch hopped over to the city i grew up in and um sort of 
put together this intimate event and night, and it was wonderful. That, the uh, the, the Toronto gig last the Toronto's week. Gig, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it was just a, a, both shows were an intimate sort of run up to what's about to come in 2024. So it's just good to be back in the city I grew up in, you know? So I consider myself Persian born, Canadian raised, British based, <laughs> globally driven. I was, <laughs> I was reading some of the, the notes around the impetus for the songs on this album, this mm. new record of yours. And it's, it's so funny how you keep doing things that are prescient. Like you're talking about, uh, this is really important because we're facing potential war in our world and everything. Mm -hmm. It's like you wrote this before the last week, right? I, I mean, uh, this this yeah, album. I wrote and it, so, yeah. and it, and it's kind of like that. Um, that I mean, you're somewhat very uh, like your 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 moment that you're very famous for is is um when your band blurred vision did that song uh where you took the pink floyd another brick in the wall and mm. you did hey ayatollah yeah and we've talked about how that song even when you were doing it at the time around the green movement yeah was supposed to be about that moment and yet it keeps being relevant year after year after year yeah i mean you know i always start out when I perform that song, I always, it's preempted with, I am working towards the day I never have to sing this song again <laughs> because I'm sick of it. I'm yeah. sick of saying his words, Ayatollah. I don't ever want to sing that song. That's really the goal that we're moving towards. But as a songwriter, I've always looked at music and lyrics as a more of a global theme, which is what this is all about. You know, these are songs that were written two years ago. Uh, in the span of that time that we were in COVID. Mm. And they just happen to also connect as they usually tend to do when something is on an international basis with so many of the things that are going on in the world right now. So yeah, I make an anti-war stand that I wrote two years ago and it's very prevalent now. Yeah, yeah. It was prevalent for the Ukraine war. And again, I pray that I will never sing these songs because that will mean that we no longer have war. Yeah, it's pertinent. So, yeah. you know. Uh, how's it, how does it feel to be back in Canada? It's wonderful. I mean, it, you know, having family here and, and it's the city that I, I grew up in and I know. Not with this many Iranians. Everything looks very different to yeah. me now. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's all changed. When you, you were know. here, it wasn't Toronto as much. No, no, not, not as much. Um, and I was always sort of away from the bulk of the Persian community. Um, so I didn't really, wasn't intertwined with it, but of course I knew about it, um, but it's changed. Everything has changed. Doesn't it freak you out how Persian it is, the, the North? It's crazy. It is, it is crazy. Especially because it's where I grew up, mm. where there were no, I mean, l literally no Persians for, for miles. Yeah. Yeah, I always say this, is like, where were you 30 years ago when I could use backup? You know, there's nothing. <laughs> I, and now it's just like, I mean, it must be, you know, does your life flash before your eyes the way it does for me when you see? I mean, you're, you're right. I mean, there was a time when, as younger, you know, in the North York area, it was very dispersed and sort of people in the outskirts and nothing like it is today. And I, I think it's, it's a wonderful thing. But like I was saying that uh, there are the elements that come in that you realize, well, this is fresh from the exports of Iran. Yeah. And they're the negative. Not always in a good way. Yeah, yeah exactly. There, there's a lot of the negative. And, and just frankly, as the community exponentially grows, I mean, Pega, you would speak to this too. You've been uh, here a long time as well. Not, and not to be too Toronto-centric mm -hmm. because, of course, people are listening to us around the world somewhere in Australia and Texas or whatever and going, <laughs> enough about Toronto. But, yeah. but as the community here exponentially grows, seemingly so do, do, the, do, so do the divisions yeah. yes. in the community, which is... Uh, which sucks, but um, yeah, yeah. It, it does. It does. Uh, I wanted to, um, but that's nice to have you in Canada. Thank you. Anyway, Thank uh, you. I wanted to start off by saying um, I'm still full from yesterday. Mm. We had a, a a group outing. Uh, the Rook. <laughs> this is before we get to the serious roundup. Um, although, I mean, what's more serious than eating a sheep? <laughs> but. Uh, <laughs> But but we had a we had a little uh, a little excursion a little a team excursion yeah. that some people who shall remain unnamed opted out of I to was... go to go okay. and have some authentic calipoche. Mm. Oh, now I'm drooling. Are you guys? Oh, Calipoche you're you're a fan. I am the biggest fan of. Please calipoche. tell me you're on my side, Zip. 
Um, I like calipotri. Oh, have you no. had calipotri? I've, I've had it. It's, oh. it's a long while since it's I've delicious. had it, but there's something special about it when it's done right. I'm Listen, I, I've here. never had, I mean, this was like a, there's a serious, like, authentic place. All they do is calipotri. They're just like, don't fuck around. There's no <laughs> no panit and sabzi here. This is like calipotri. You know, there's no wow. kebab. It's wow. like, and, uh, and so I had had it before, but mm-hmm. I felt I feel like I've always had like at a friend's house, or I had it in in Dubai, and I feel like I, I, it wasn't. So that knowing that this was the real thing, you mm-hmm. know, it was an interesting experience. And um, did you like it? I gotta say, I mean, uh, yeah, I thought it was very. T- it still kind of freaks me out, but it's really tasty. It's good. Oh, it's like amazing. The, like the one part that freaked me out was the eye. Oh, you'll get used to that. And uh, like just the idea, like he was like, uh, hey, why did you have the, <laughs> no. my friend was like, oh, the, the, the left eye is the tastier one. <laughs> and I was like, oh, seriously, I'm going to eat the, the poor oh sheep's God. eye. And then it was actually and delicious. It? It's delicious. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. And, and the, uh, the face, <laughs> I don't know you what it's called. What's the face called? I just can't. Rohan, what's the face called? Banogush. Banogush. Is that the same as the inside of the cheek? Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, yeah. Okay, that that's I've actually had. That's very tasty. Delicious. And that's very tongue. tasty. The and the tongue. tongue. Yeah, we're tongue getting into territory. I don't understand. See, like... this is the thing about Pega. Oh, you're here... <laughs> so uh, you're so excited about being Iranian. Yes. You're running around to listening to Radio Javon or whatever that music is <laughs> that you listen to, and the Shisha Hash and all that. But the, well, I would think you would embrace this this Calipatia thing. I I just I can't get over what you were saying with the eye and the head and the. I, I'm sorry to everyone who enjoys it. There's a smell that I just can't yeah, get over. Yeah, that's what they said. Yeah, what? To Calipacha's defense, okay? Yeah. It is Who will speak the for the cal- Calipacha? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Raho. Also, Raho, Raho will. Raho will, because yes, yeah, I, yeah. I love it. And also, if you know the history, I mean, Calipacha comes from the idea that you should not waste any part of a dead animal, basically. Mm-hmm. And I think that's yeah, beautiful. Yeah. You know? <laughs> so I was, I was like, afraid of it until yesterday. Now I'm like now big defender like of cat. Yeah, yeah, would you? No, but, uh, but go ahead. So yes, yeah, don't so, waste any part of the animal. Yeah, don't yeah. don't waste any part of the animal. And I think Iranians do a great job cooking that. And I think it's very delicious. <laughs> it so is very it. chabby, right? Yeah, you shouldn't have it more than once a month. Yeah, that's what they say, and the, which Once is a, a weird month. business model for the re- you know, like it's like he baked into the restaurant. It's like, well, see you in a couple of months because we can't come regularly. Anyway, I'm going to give a shout out to yeah. these guys because uh, you know they're not sponsoring us or anything, but they, but they they it was a it's a very authentic place it's called Nika Kitchen. It's in Richmond cool. Hill, in and so if, and they're actually they're only open in the mornings wow. or like they close at like four p.m. each day. Right. So it's like a, a morning crowd from six a.m. So the guy, the owner, who I was talking to afterwards, Masood, he 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 gets up like and makes calipache at three in the morning for oh, the wow. six a.m. crowd. Yeah. yeah, and like workers will come in the first thing in the morning, and yeah, wow. So it's an amazing culture, but it it put me in mind of something uh, also this week that I remember that I think is a funny thing that Persians say to each other. Um, you know, um, sometimes, <laughs> at least in my family, we would say this, where you would eat something, mm-hmm. my dad would say, you know, he would eat something that he didn't love the taste of, and he would say, mide, right? <laughs> Did you ever get that? I've never heard that. You never heard that? No, never heard that, no. Is that just my dad? Yeah, <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> See, I think these things are Iranian things. Yeah. Oh. Which I always thought was such a funny thing. That's that is funny. Yeah. Because like it that, tastes actually. foreign. Like we're sitting in fucking Canada, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, eat macaroni and cheese, man. Like it always means like it tastes <laughs> off somehow, right? Yeah. It's, uh, but I didn't know that was oh, just that's a, great. Well, let us know. See, this is again. Maybe it's just the wrong crowd here because I'm sure somebody would have said, my dad also used to, you know what my dad used to call a cat? You know, gorbe, <laughs> what he would call? Bishurkhar. <laughs> A bishur A stupid donkey. <laughs> In a loving way, he loved the cats. He would call them bishur. Uh, so I would like, like growing up. I was like, oh, what's your bishur name? And they'd be like, what? What are you saying? You know, the bishur What? Are you sure your dad wasn't just setting you up for a lot? No, of bad that's not his name. Bishur. <laughs> Tell the kid. Uh, all right, oh fine. <laughs> so, uh, well, what have we learned so far? Raha and I are going to go for Calipache. Yeah? Definitely. <laughs> Sepp, so you. far you're very Switzerland about all of this. You're, you don't, you know, 
you've been very neutral about he everything. He said he likes Canada Butcher. I'm, I'm he down kind for Canada of said Butcher. it, but he, you're down for I was really for hoping I would have yeah. someone on my I'm side. I'm down for but, trying you know. it, but uh, yeah. All right, let's get to the roundup. Uh, enough hijinks. Let's uh, let's talk about. Uh, uh, sadly, I mean, all of the, you know, I guess there's some weeks where we have some positive things. Yeah. Shervin wins a Grammy or something, but mm-hmm. I mean, there's very there's very little that feels positive right now. Not just for Iranians and Iran necessarily, but um, but just globally. Mm-hmm. Um, and I thought I would I would ask a, a tediously. A uh, simple question to begin, uh, and um, because the roundup is just about giving us your opinions based on your own experience, nobody has to be an expert to. But just in general, how are you feeling about the world right now, Raha? I'm feeling. I was actually listening to a podcast about this. I'm feeling very hopeless, um, but it's very important to find hope in times like this where the world when the world is going crazy around you and everything seems to be kind of spiraling down. Um, so you feel more hopeless now than you have in, in other times? Yeah, because, I mean, back at last year, it was all about Iran and women like freedom, and we were fighting that war. But now it's become, a, it's, 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 a bigger, um, it's a bigger conflict, I think. And but if I may, this time last year, we were, uh, I mean, we were horrified by kids being shot and Masa Amini and Keon and Nika and all that. But we were also consumed in hope. Like mm-hmm. this ex- this exact yeah. time last year, we were freaking exactly. out. With We were unified. Mm-hmm. We were like, mm-hmm. change is coming. Yeah. Um, so in, in juxtaposed to that... Yeah. It's a very different it's moment. A very, it's a very difficult time because things have calmed down there, not for the better, um, and the world is going crazy as well. And the world is going crazy not unrelated to Iran. That's exactly. what I want to get yes. to uh, exactly. in this yeah. on this show. But uh, just in general, Sepp, how are you feeling with the world right now? Um, I think I always maintain the line of hope. Uh, and in these times of great sorrow and pain that you see around the world, I always tend to dive back into my heroes and look at the paths that they walked in times of great despair. I think of Bob Marley in the 70s and the revolutions and the political upheaval that was going on in Jamaica and how he stood with so much strength through his music and through his personality while treading some of the most dangerous moments of bloodshed and carnage and getting shot. And then two weeks later, later, stepping up on stage and uniting the oppositions that were trying to kill him. Uh, I think about John Lennon and I think about these voices that went through so much in terms of war and all that stuff and yet still managed to give humanity the best that we hope for in song. And I always tend to go back to that. And I always think that the best is still there. There is goodness to fight for. There is justice to fight for. Even if it is just a, a fool's hope, okay. I still maintain it, you know, no Pe- matter how bad it gets. Nicely said, Pega. Um, I'm definitely less hopeful than I was last year. That's for sure. Um, I think I, I very much agree with what you were saying that, you know, last year, this time, there was this invigorating sense of anything is possible and we're on the cusp of you know getting what we've all wanted for the last 40 some odd years as uh, you know at least relating it to iran Mm -hmm. um right now i'm definitely less hopeful i'm i'm concerned about the region as a whole i think in light of you know the the current conflict between israel and palestine and and what's been happening in gaza um that's made me a little bit more hopeless I guess because I know I know what's to come I know it's not going to just stop there I know the implications that has on the region as a whole and that's where the concern is somebody asked me a question I, I want to uh, as we start this round up here I want to this is the first question I have for you and it's actually a question somebody asked m- of me mm-hmm. um, and because I've talked about I mean that the situation that is dominating the discussion around the world, obviously, right now is Israel, Gaza, um, 
obviously what's exactly happening moment to moment on the ground there, but also right. the broader implications of mm. what this means for the world, et cetera. And I've talked about it on this show, particularly with regard to um, the, the, the responsibility and the role that uh, the Iranian regime uh, or the Islamic Republic, I should say, uh, and, and its leaders are playing in what's going on uh, there. And I suspect we're going to talk a bit about that. Um, but but that's been my focus to sort of go, if if you're up for high-fiving because Hamas is having its way with people at a music festival and, and, and slaughtering them, I'm not on side, you know, and that this is, you, that's, that's where I, uh, 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 as an objective journalist, I'm going to draw the line and go, there, you know, I, I choose to be subjective, <laughs> right? But, but somebody in the aftermath of that was saying, um, people are asking me to whether I support Israel and whether I support the Palestinians and and I feel like I'm in a weird position as an Iranian you know um, and there's so many ways that we can parse what that means you know and we all know and probably with people yeah. listening to us right now know the strange situation it, the strange existence of Iranians when it comes to this issue are we, are we with the Muslims are we with the state of Israel which was our friend for many years what are, where, where are we at this is a, this is a regime that's funding Hamas there's at the same time we are compassionate about Gaza what is the and the question that was asked of me is do Iranians need to take a position in other words if you were sitting somewhere I suspect in in let's say Cambodia and you're a Cambodian and mm -hmm. you're you're watching this you may empathize you may have an opinion on imperialism and colonialism and all that for sure or the United States but if you're sitting there you go oh, well that's a conflict that's happening somewhere in the world much the way we might look at um, something that's happening in South America or whatever um, and that's not about me and and mm -hmm. good luck to both sides or whatever you know um, but this feels a lot more intimate somehow for us even if we're not Israelis or Palestinians yeah. so do Iranians need to take I'm not sure what the answer is but Rahul you're shaking your head as an Iranian my fight is very clear and it's with the IRGC so I think whatever side I'm taking um, doesn't have to do with any other countries or governments of any other countries it's got to do with against IRGC and specifically in this instant, um, I'm, I'm very angry because I feel like for so many years now, the IRGC has been prioritizing the people of that region over Iranians. And I think that's what we should all be concerned about. Um, yeah. Sorry, that's, what do you mean by that? The IRGC has been prioritizing people of the, the region uh, over Iranians? So I know what you mean, but explain it. Yeah. They've been sending help. They've been sending resources. They've been sending to to Gaza and to I want to say that region because I I want to take a humanitarian side. I don't want to I don't want to take side with any particular party. Um, but what I know for a fact is that I'm against the Iranian regime um, prioritizing other people um, and prioritizing a war that's not. His or yeah, I mean, I almost, government. I almost feel like I'm, I know you don't necessarily mean it that way, but I'm almost like would that they were prioritizing people. I feel like it's <laughs> prioritizing a an expansionist ideology mm -hmm, by yeah. by funding, you know, uh, yeah. uh, organizations that are that Terrorist do horrible things. Yeah, I yeah. mean, so that's uh, yeah, not to be confused with helping no. uh, the good people of whatever no, no, no. country. I Which mean, because we all do. know they're not. Because <laughs> we all know they're not. IRGC is a terrorist organization and it collaborates with terrorist organizations and I think we saw an example of that yesterday when the defense minister uh, met with um, Hamas's leader so the foreign minister, foreign minister. Yeah, we'll foreign get to minister, we'll, we'll get to yeah. that uh, do, do Iranians need to take a position on this war this situation I think and I thought about this over the last few days of of what has happened and you know it's one of those moments which I hate but it is that moment of I told you so quote unquote mm -hmm. Iranians all of us from inside outside all around the world have been shouting not only for our brothers and sisters inside Iran 
But for any of us that see this as a global society and want to change the world for the better, we were shouting at the fact that, look, if we don't stop this regime, this is the outcome. These are not, you know, groups or individuals that look to the world and think, I will help you. I will bring peace to your lands. These people, all they think about is destruction. They are like the purveyors of hate and pain. Mm -hmm. And for us to... Who are these people? The regime. The regime, yeah. Who work with terror terrorist proxies like Hezbollah, like mm -hmm. Hamas. And so when we were shouting woman, life, freedom, we're still shouting woman, life, freedom. We will continue to shout Zan Zindigi Azadi until it is reality. The situation is that it's not just for Iranians. We've been banging on everyone's door saying it's for mm. the whole world right. because Iran's freedom puts an end to all of this, changes all of this stuff that we see in the Middle East. And yes, certainly, Iranians perhaps have some of the best input to give being from the region and understanding not only the political, which many can understand around the world, but the cultural sensitivities. But, but I, I think part of the question, do Iranians need to take a position is, uh, you know, um, are, is it inc incumbent upon us to support Israel? or to support the Palestinians? That's a decision for every human being to make. Uh, I don't think it's something that comes down to, I would never want to be that person. I'm seeing it a lot around the world of people being violently forced to make a decision, right. mm -hmm. which is rather BS, uh, and and to see support for or that. Or to not say their position for fear of being beaten up or, or something. Or, yeah. or exactly, yeah. Yeah. or that which is ridiculous. but. I think it's it's something that uh, you know Iranians can give a, a, an analysis to this the way that others cannot, and that's where the value comes in. And a lot of the Western sort of progressive minds that are injecting their thoughts into this equation are doing more harm because they don't understand the cultural sensitivities we'll, we'll of the Middle East. Pega, how do you answer the question? Um, I don't know. I. <laughs> I think it's really personal. I, I, I can't say that, you know, we should or we shouldn't as a whole. What I can say is that, um, similar to what Sepp was saying, I think as Iranians and because of what we've gone through with the Islamic Republic, with what we've been going through the last 40 some odd years, what we've been through the last year and a half especially, we're in a great position to be able to speak on some of what is also happening within the region, whether it be in Gaza right now, whether it be in Syria, whether it be in Lebanon and all sorts of other places where there are actors similar to the Islamic Republic. Mm -hmm. um, and I and I agree with you, Seb. I think there's nuances that we're very well versed on. And for that reason, if we have these strong opinions, they, they're warranted. And I think that's where the strong opinions come from. Uh, there, there are those nuances, but there's also um, some basic stuff that doesn't even require nuance that we understand that it's, it, it's kind of humorous to me that the world doesn't. Um, there is this ongoing conversation about is Iran somehow involved mm -hmm. in oh supporting Hamas? I mean, go. I was listening to, uh, uh, I, I found this such an interesting moment for me because I, I was listening to a, a, a call-in show, an American radio mm -hmm. show, a very popular one. Uh, and the question was, um, I, do you think Iran is so involved somehow in you know, Hamas and, and what's, what's happening? And so I'm Jerry from you know Lubbock, Texas, is calling and going. I think so. I think that you're right. You know, somebody else says, "Well, we shouldn't jump to conclusions." And I'm like listening, going, "Yes, of course." Fuck's sake, you know. Yeah. Any Iranian, exactly. ask an Iranian, and we'll tell you yes. I mean, uh, except for those who are somehow intertwined with the regime or Sepah well, or whatever. Even the ones who are intertwined are admitted. Well, they would say yes too. I mean, but it, it, what do you make of this weird moment where? The Ir Ir Iranians are almost ahead of the rest of the world in yeah. saying, "No, no, no! Iran is complicit in this. It's don't, don't actually um, try and be nice to us and be uh, and 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 be too thoughtful about this. We already know, of course, that this regime. I mean, we're." intimately aware of what this regime is capable of yeah. and therefore of course we know that the regime is involved in exporting terror but somehow. But they can't say, sorry, they Go can't ahead. say that. Are, are, this is why I think there's some 
question about that because there's a concern that comes with admitting that. I mean, it, we talked about this yes. on Monday. We talked that about why. That they have to start a war then, exactly. et cetera. So it becomes really difficult to say, But you know, at the level of a talk show uh, where, yeah, where that's people are difference. calling in, that's the part where I'm just going. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, we, we have to educate now it's an, another round of education, you mm-hmm. know, where we have to talk to our non-Iranian friends and say, this is, you know, you're not offending me if you say that you think Iran is involved yes. in this. Because we agree with you. Yeah. Because I- Iran, quote unquote, is not our families in, in you know, inside the country. I, Iran is this regime that uh, the people of the country don't even support for the most part. I right? think the education piece is what it's been for so long, which is dis- which is really making people understand that it's the Islamic Republic and Iran. They're, they're two separate things. Iranians and the Islamic Republic are yeah. two very, very different things. And I think that's the distinction. And it's, uh, you know, from what you were saying about the talk show, it's that, uh, again, the idea of understanding the nuances and feeling like you want to pull your hair out when you hear somebody go, well, I think the Islamic Republic are, be, are involved with Hamas. And as Iranians, we're like, what are you kidding? <laughs> but the problem is that- Well, they don't say, I mean, I, at this point, everybody knows that part, but they. But they, the question around was the, I mean, these are the things that- Were they I'm directly sorry, involved with so, this attack? There's so much, uh, and I think social media amps this up, is yeah, what are the particulars? I mean, even, not to go into a rabbit hole on this, but even the question of whether the, the babies have been de- decapitated or not and yeah. this dominated for 48 hours of no that was fake news it's like really do we really need to know whether yeah. the babies were de- like we can't call this as a terror exactly. attack unless we know if the babies were de- de- decapitated and babies yeah. were killed right we agree on that yeah. we agree that there was a music festival that with the the biggest loss of innocent life at any music festival ever yeah yeah, yeah but you know, it's too I mean, horrific for that so the context is always looked upon with western eyes well it couldn't happen here and if it did happen here we'd have a great deal of evidence for it so where is your evidence show us the paperwork almost trying to see these regimes and these organizations as being legitimate mm-hmm. in that way these are evil monsters like there yes is or wanting to change the conversation uh, depending on which side you support kind of thing it's like well do we really have the evidence of that 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 happened right. it's like dude we have enough evidence well that, it's like the moon landing at, died, at the end right? of the day you yeah. know every, every no they don't it's it's this idea that i don't believe anything i see i don't believe anything i read but of course for us we're looking at it and we're going well yes this absolutely is happening because just up until what eight months ago when we were yelling about the fact that there's sixteen thousand inmates uh, prisoners protesters that were arrested that we kept saying they will kill them if we don't speak and then everybody on the outside in the western world was like what are you exactly. talking about exactly. they're not going to kill sixteen thousand and execute all these people when iranians were saying of course they are if yeah. we don't stand up and shout yes they're all dead yes without a hesitation it seems inconceivable maybe too, yeah <laughs> um but, uh, but the other thing that's happening with with this Iran and the Hamas situation, uh, the, the, the situation in there's this horrific to anyone, any objective person would look at what's happening in Gaza and say this is horrific, yeah. right? Um, I am I missing this? I don't see where Iran is sending help to the people of uh, of Gaza right now. I mean, I know that they're meeting with Hamas, yeah. Yeah. and I don't actually know what Hamas is doing to yeah. to, to save the people of of, of Gaza. Not yeah. very there's, much. There's Nothing. a there's Nothing. the 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 tone and tenor of this video that emerged of Abdullahian, mm-hmm. the foreign minister, meeting with his Hamas counterpart. Yeah. And it was like two bros going into the the club on yeah. a Saturday night, you yeah. know, um, was was kind of terrifying. Mm-hmm. It was like, as we say, not only is there no denial, like you know, where I mean, there's a de- denial that somebody issued it was a Khamenei or somebody Khamenei, said yeah. well, we didn't exactly help plan the thing. He you said know. we weren't involved in the militant attacks, right? But way said. to go. But but good but good job, Hamas. But, yeah, yeah. Meanwhile, yeah. That, I mean, added leader that is in think, my yeah. office three days prior to yeah. the attack. Yeah. What, what 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 do you? I mean, none of us are policy experts, but but it, but it, it does feel like we're they're closer to a war that involves Iran. 
than than we've been. Right? I think that's something that the Islamic Republic wants, wants yeah. desperately. Wants. That's why I was I was Absolutely. thinking none of these things that they're doing make sense unless they want Iran to be part of this war. Well, of, of course, and the, the 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 dialogue that was had prior to this was Saudi Arabia's uh, thawing of relations mm-hmm. with Israel, the Abraham Accords that. The Islamic Republic did not want that to go through. And many exactly. people have said that this was a big move to completely destroy those talks from going forward into sort of some sense of, of, of peace between the nations. Uh, the Islamic Republic do not want anything of peace in any region of the world. Their survival and existence thrives and survives and lives off of war, pain, control, and basic oppression well not only that but uh, as raha was saying uh, or intimating the agenda of the islamic republic the stated agenda of the regime is to export the islamic republic of course is to export the ideology ideology, export the power bring others on side in different Mm -hmm. parts of the world where you and you see that happening and in different levels there's a lot of there's a lot of solidarity with the with the regime not necessarily with iranians but with the iranian that a uh, sad regime (laughs) right right. what's that ain't that a sad situation it's it's a bizarre situation i find it desperately sad that people side with the Islam that I see flags of the Islamic Republic. What kills me is I'm watching my Palestinian brothers and sisters doing these rallies, and it's like, yes, stand for your rights because you you you, you deserve those human rights and all of that. But at the same time, I'm seeing placards of Ayatollah Khomeini yeah. uh-huh. and the Islamic flag, and I'm oh thinking, well, why aren't you guys stopping these? Why are why is there no dialogue here to say, hey? We're not associated with those yeah. bad guys. Don't yeah. bring that to our party. But look, can I just turn it around? Let me ask it the, the same, maybe a similar question, but a different way. Um, Reza Pahlavi mm-hmm. has basically said, the Crown Prince, Shah, Shahzadeh Reza Pahlavi, what, whatever title you want to uh, <laughs> call him by, he has said uh, effectively, I mean, I saw him on Fox News yesterday. Yeah. He basically said, all of what's happening in that, you know, with this Iran, uh, sorry, Israel Gaza conflict, basically, Middle East in flames, all the responsibility of Iran. 100%. In other words, all of, well, I'm going to ask if you agree. It sounds like you do. In other words, without this Iranian regime, this wouldn't be happening. Mm-hmm. And if we eradicate, if we get rid of this regime, I, I'm, I don't think I'm oversimplifying what the crown prince is saying or what Reza Pahlavi is saying because I think he that it's a pretty simple position mm-hmm. it's like maximum pressure is not being followed we're not imposing the sanctions the way we should this regime has been allowed to do this and while this t- regime runs around you know able to um, uh, have the power that it does the, reg- the, the this is what you get this yeah. is what you get in the Middle East yeah. is that too simplistic? I don't, not at all. I, what's, what Shahzadeh Reza Pahlavi has stated over and over again is the absolute truth to everything we're seeing. Since the inception of the Islamic Republic in the Middle East and the revolution, everything has deteriorated and gone. But the conflict between the Arabs and Jews yeah. in that well, it uh, came piece before, of land it, sure, did, it did came not with, come with the Islamic Revolution. Of course not, but it wasn't as horrific as it has become now because the Islamic Republic's influence in the Palestinian and Israeli conflict is such a severe injection of warfare, of extremism, and of a lot of money. They've injected a lot of money behind these terrorist organizations that they obviously have, but that comes back to maximum pressure that he's talking about. Why is the Islamic Republic making $90 billion through oil sales when they're supposed to be sanctioned? Why aren't they on the IRGC terrorist list in, the, in Europe? What Why do, aren't these what, things what, happening? What do you guys think of this? I mean, whether you support Reza Pahlavi yeah. or not, I mean, do you... Do you, um, you know... I don't think we can deny the role that the Islamic Republic plays in fueling the fire of the problems that have occurred in that region. But I also don't think it's as simple to say that they are the only or the sole um, perpetrator for this. I think, like you said, you know, Arab-Israeli conflict has been around for 70 plus years. 
and the Islamic Republic has only been for 40 some odd years. We, we know that these conflicts existed prior to the Islamic Republic. The point is, like Sepp was saying, it's the resources, it's the finances, it's the backing of these organizations that are fueling the fire. I definitely think that without the Islamic Republic, yes, things would be much better. Is it to say that, you know, we'd have world peace and there would be no other conflicts or no other issues? No, definitely not. But we know that they are a huge actor in the region and that, you know, they want conflict they want conflict within the arab world because that's what solidifies their position so of course they're going to be trying and instigating trying to support terrorist organizations trying to fuel the fires of these problems well i think you know to to interject mm -hmm. in my opinion the number one obstacle between the israeli and palestinian peace to be achieved the number one obstacle there is hamas and the n number one backer and head of all of these terrorist organizations is the Islamic Republic. So if, if for me, I, I kind of think if you simplify it and you take the head off the snake, the mm -hmm. bodies and tentacles will all die away. And but the so the, the, all those people who are in the streets in Jordan and in, uh, I mean, you actually don't even need to go to the region, in London, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> uh, um, supporting the Palestinian cause, uh, some of them actually support Hamas. Well, that's uh, the, some of them. It's, not, it's not, horrible. How, how can, you know? It's so, it's, so it's not just the, the Islamic Republic. And I think wrong. if we're oversimplifying that conflict, it's not just Hamas. It's about land. It's about borders. Mm -hmm. It's about you know so many other specifics. That yes, Hamas is a huge problem. But of course, there are so many other conflicts that that the Arab-Israeli conflict is about. I know. I, what I'm trying to sort of say is if you remove that big element of Hamas those things that you're talking about will be solvable we will get to that there's point. no mm -hmm. question that the Islamic Republic of Iran is tipping the scales with, of its, course. Its, with its iron fist did you want to say anything about this no I just wanted to agree with everything it just circles back to what I was saying in the beginning I feel like if IRGC is taken away from the Middle East um, a lot of things can be resolved through time. Obviously, it's not going to happen within a day, but, you know, and, and that's what and, the fire there. And, and that's where I feel like if there's, again, speaking to our Iranian sisters and brothers, as you say, you know, uh, if there's, uh, for those who are painstakingly posting on social media about um, Israel or Gaza or something like that, it's like, let's keep the eye on the prize of our own ancestry mm -hmm. right yes, exactly. like, which yeah. is which is this regime that uh y you know is that we have some responsibility for i mean we're um canadian citizens or british citizens but this is our background this is where our family is and we need to continue that energy to to not just call out the regime but to educate the rest of the world about yeah. the role of again i i do find it funny that there are as you said that there are people in the western left supporting effectively supporting iran yeah. supporting the islamic republic of iran for fear that it's somehow racist or something to to attack that's you know and and where <laughs> iranians are going no you know this is uh stand with us we don't We're need your iranians. help in terms of uh you know yeah i mean it's uh um, we are coming to you on rookmedia.com. It's there. You can link to all of our platforms, Spotify, SoundCloud, Apple, Instagram, CastBox. If you want to watch visuals with Rook, you can see them on YouTube and our descriptions and bulletins in um, Persian on Telegram. Remember, you can become a Patreon member by going to our website, rookmedia.com, and becoming a Rook member there when you press the Support Us button. All right. Um, I kind of wanted to get that conversation out of the way before we talked about uh, Darius Merjui because um, I'm not sure how we recover from a conversation about uh, an iconic Iranian filmmaker being murdered uh, in Iran um, and as we were saying I mean it's it's it, there's not a lot of rosy things to talk mm -hmm. about but this is this was particularly just devastating um, treacherous kind of um, news that was one of those things where you do a double take. I didn't yeah. grow up in Iran, and I'm aware of him, him as a filmmaker and his status and his legacy. Uh, but what what happened? He died, and his wife. So um, catch us up on the story for anybody. I mean, I, most Iranians around the world listening know this story yeah. or know what we know so far, anyway. But what's the latest of what we know, Pega? 
So what happened was on Saturday, the news broke that um, Daryush Mehrjui and his wife, uh, Vahide Mohammad Ifar, were found by their daughter in their home in Karaj. And they were both found dead, stabbed to death, um, horrifically. I mean, I, I don't necessarily want to go over the details of, of the gory uh, scene that the their poor daughter was faced with. But um, we don't really know what happened. There, There's no con- concrete answer as to you know was it was it a random attack was it um you know who who killed these these individuals what happened there's no security footage somehow um there, there's nothing there's no evidence but, which but is there's no shortage of theories on persian twitter from exactly what I understand. Yeah. exactly so the fact that this is such a suspicious death um coupled with the fact that you know we had another suspicious death of another iranian director mm-hmm. um I, I think months ago, um, Kumar's poor Ahmad, same thing kind of happened there. So th- this idea that this is somehow um, related to the Islamic Republic is definitely not far-fetched. Um, there's definitely a lot of theories circulating about that. But stepping away from that for a moment, I just want to shed light on you know how, how big of a loss this was. Um, Darius Merjui was um, you know, probably a pioneer of the Iranian cinema new wave movement that kind of occurred in the 70s and he was one of the first people to really shed light on the discontents of urban life in Iran. Um, Some of his movies caused a great deal of, I don't know if I want to say controversy, but they definitely shed a bright light on some of the issues in Iran. Mm. And so to lose a visionary like that is Mm. just a catastrophic loss for sure. Um, Raha, what did you think when you heard the news? I was um, I was devastated basically. Um, just first of all, I feel so much for Mona, their daughter, who found who found them um, in that horrific state, um, going back home. Basically, I can only imagine what she's she's. I can't even imagine actually <laughs> what she's going through, and I hope that she recovers from this trauma. Um, but um, I don't know if you read the news that. Um, Vahida had uh, posted a um, had made a post the night before the incident happened, and she had written in her post that or uh, or the week before or a few days before was it the uh, night before? I I read that it was the night before, but uh-huh. but I'm not sure. Vahida being Vahida being the wife. Yes. Um, she wrote in her post that tonight our dog started barking vigorously a- at the door. So I went to the door and um, there was this man. I'm just summarizing what she said. There was this man and um, he pulled out a, a knife mm-hmm. and he threatened me with the knife. And I'm still shaking. For, at first I thought he's joking, but then I figured it, it was a real threat and um, sh- the fact that she actually wrote this on social media and contacted the securities and the police and they didn't do anything, you would not have this in any country where they value their artists and, and their yeah. cultural figures. You know, he's a huge figure in the Iranian cinema, as uh, Pega actually pointed out. And I, um, the only thing that I can say to this is that what a loss for us as a society to have to to be to to be in a situation where one of our intellectual figures is taken away from Mm -hmm. us like this Mm -hmm. and the and again we go back to the government and we go back to we go back to the irgc and it's them creating a situation where people are either enraged or they hired this person to do this. So many you know? people, first of all, we know, there's a lot we don't know, but we mm-hmm. do know that it wasn't somebody who'd had too many pints at the local pub who wandered in looking to st- stab somebody and it happened to be Darius Shemir Jui, right? I mean, we this it looks like it's with planned. intent and yeah. planned and we have the, and the, the warning beforehand and all of that, which is all very bizarre. Mm-hmm. But all of these things also have a context in the sense that, um, you know, I was talking to somebody and just going, oh, you know, kind of Iran, chaos. And they got very defensive and said, an Iranian, obviously, and said, uh, Nadige, this could happen anywhere. You know, these things happen. And and uh, Iran is just like any other country. And, you know, you know, there's always this defense, right? Mm-hmm. Of, and I tell you, I mean, three and a half years of hosting this program, 
where all even when we don't want to be political and we go out of our way to not be political every person who comes on the show talks about how much misery there's been in the last 45 years you can't see this the murder of an iconic octogenarian filmmaker and he's stabbed in his, with his wife as somehow separate from all the other misery i mean it's 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 surely all part and parcel of something that's not right right in 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 the country of our ancestors so it's that darkness that hangs over the great ancient lands of our ancestries of our ancestors of our homeland and it won't fade away it won't go away none of this stuff that we hear all of this pain and suffering is going to be alleviated by just allowing it to carry on and sort of just seeing it as well that is what it is you know Iran it's led by the Islamic Republic we don't know the details this and that I was under the impression that uh, the, the Mr. Uh, Mayor Jui, uh he did wasn't he very vocal about he the was, Islamic Republic he, he was. I, well, he, I heard about he, he wasn't but he wasn't recently, he wasn't though. Batman Gobadi vocal yeah. like no, he yeah. he had issued a like a um, a video a video yeah. and, and right, he, that but he, but he wasn't uh i mean he, he like like there's someone like Jaff Adapanohi whose yeah. career is being a rebel kind of yeah. uh, fighting against the regime i don't think he was in that category no, right? right no he wasn't i think it, it's only within recent years and and specifically in the last year and a bit that this one video in particular went viral and it was of him you know just kind of so emotional and so distraught and and he was saying you know come come kill me come take me yeah and you know that i think was one of the first times that we really saw him be vocal to that extent and what does what what pushes a man that has been so quiet for so long to be able to live under that circumstance and make his movies still for so Mm -hmm. long to then get to this point at this old age where he thinks to himself, I cannot hold it in any longer. Mm -hmm. I cannot stay silent of what is happening. Well, and there's definitely, sorry, there's definitely different ways of vocalizing your discontent. I mean, look at the films he's made. The fact is that he was one of the first Iranian filmmakers to showcase the discontent of society within his films, right? So, I mean, look at Santuri, for example. I mean, I think that's one that many people have seen. There's so many things in that film that that very creatively but obviously show that discontent yeah Yeah, that's what i was going to say i don't think i don't think he's recently become an activist in this area i think he's been an activist through his work of art um and um because i think as an artist you don't necessarily have to come on camera and be like this is what i believe um you can just talk through your your art right well and, absolutely and that's what he was doing i mean santuri it came out and it made a lot of noise because at the time that it came out it was it it, it was it was huge you know it, it, it you were had, in iran at the time yes i was yeah. i was in iran at the time and um i was actually i think in my first i think it was i was in my third year of middle school and we were all talking about it, like, oh my God, look, Golshifta has the, has an affair in this film. So it was very forward thinking. It was very different from what we had seen in that time. Like at a part, um, Golshifta loses her scarf, and I remember we were all um, we were all watching. We were like, oh my God, that that just happened, you know. Mm. So there are a lot of elements in that film that speak to um, Merjui as an activist and as someone who was not okay with the situation. And it's not just that one video where he's like angry about the regime not allowing his film to come out. He had um, m- he had previously also uh, done a video where he's asking um, Vah- Vahida, his wife, to take off her scarf. Yeah, take off your scarf. This is all over. This is all going to be over. You know, he's definitely mm. he's obviously uh, speaking about the the woman life freedom sure. movement, and he's he was an activist. So I think um, yes, I think he was active all right well uh anything else we want to add for this uh, this this roundup i mean there's so much to talk about yeah. this did cristiano ronaldo uh, get threatened with having to go to will oh he be put God. in jail for for putting his arm around uh i thought you were going to say something about arsenal again no 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 i mean i'm happy to but no uh did you see that though no oh, I, I actually that was didn't. ridiculous there, there was a there was a fake news story going mm. around that um, when Cristiano Ronaldo was in Iran 
And you remember the woman in the the yeah, artist yeah. in the wheelchair yes, that, yes. that he had somehow touched her, and because this is against Islamic law, he was now going to be well, sent of to prison. He, her. he hugged her. They took photos and together. Kissed right, her, he right. kissed her. Yeah. Like I mean, we well, have it on camera. There, this is not a did he didn't. No, 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 like, no. It was a, it was a. <laughs> Cristiano Ronaldo, Ronaldo better not return to Iran oh because God. he'll be rounded up. And then they, the Iranian authorities came out and said, no, in fact, I think. I think in fact, did. we'll give him another silk carpet <laughs> yeah, if he comes. Yeah, exactly. We're, we're yeah. happy to have him back I would here love to, that to distract happen. from everything else exactly. that's gone on. I would love that to happen. That was a funny, wake him up. funny news, though, because before it was uh, deemed to be fake, I was like, oh, my God, are you kidding me? Well, that, that's the thing, too. I mean, we're both... Um, not surprised and no. shocked and horror, but we're uh, we're also so traumatized that it's like the yeah. gain munde, fucking like Cristiano Ronaldo. Yeah. They're gonna put him in jail. Yeah. In uh, I mean, it's a that may be the turning point. <laughs> that's right. That may be the that's turning right. point. That that maybe then they would. Uh, yeah. Oh, and the other thing was the uh, the ongoing saga of the. I mean, this is. It's just I, I, only from a sociological point of view, as looking at media and stuff. For me, it's the ongoing saga of whether the six billion dollars is frozen or unfrozen, depending oh my on. God. I mean, it. You know, the American mainstream media. Mm -hmm. If this was about anything else, there would be shock and horror at how how wishy-washy wishy-washy yeah. and lack of factual analysis mm -hmm. there i mean just like that a, a network can say no 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 that's going to be frozen it's fine biden says so is it and then the qataris are coming out saying no, no who who made that deal about? iran's yeah. laughing about it i mean it's just yeah. n none of us know the truth i guess but it certainly is not that everything's fine it's been frozen the six billion isn't going to the regime yeah i think all that six billion is is just a a, a ploy that's just thrown into the media and in for people to talk about what does you, the islamic republic for six billion i just said they, they just made 90 billion from oil sales in one year that six billion doesn't it's not insignificant though it, it's for them that six billion is simply to say look americans they bow to us we demanded, they bowed. For them, that was it. Was it was a marketing? It was a PR stunt for for the Islamic Republic. Here are a few of your of 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 your American citizens. Give us. We got everything we wanted. We're the victors. What did you guys get? And then they turn around and we see what happens a few days later with the massacres and the chaos unfolding in Israel and Palestine and in Gaza. Anything else you want to add? Sir, uh, <laughs> while you're here, and the rest of us are staying in the colony, you're going back to the, yeah, go and listen to Love and Revolution. <laughs> All right, the new album by Sepp Osley, That's Love right. and Revolution, yeah. available on Spotify or at All your yeah. friendly neighborhood uh, streaming service. Yeah, um, All of them. Well, worth checking out, you guys. If you uh, check out Sepp, Sepp with two P's, S E P P. Hmm. I was actually I put in Sepp S E P P in Spotify, and and you came up. Really? I think you're the only Sepp with I, two P's. I hope so. I, I hope nobody ever thinks of that football FIFA guy. <laughs> the oh, old that's man, right. Sepp Blatter. Blatter. He's the only other but one. But he doesn't have I, an album on Spotify, does no, he? No, he doesn't. <laughs> I hope. He better not. I was talking about the <laughs> music, music portal. Uh, Raha John, it's very nice to have you here. Thank you very much for having me. To be continued. Yes. Uh, maybe you can give some innovation a strategy <laughs> to uh, Sepp on his uh, for his new Call album. Call me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Pega, as always. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Uh, let's go for Calipache. <laughs> no. <laughs> that one thing, no. Silence yes. goes over the crowd. Yeah, <laughs> suddenly. It's the most controversial. Like we, we literally discussed the Middle East, and the most controversial conversation of the day was Calipache. Calipache. I want to eat Calipache with a Scotsman. With, with oh, the, the haggis. Shit, you know, because Somebody was telling me the Greeks have their version of uh, Calipache, they do. too. I'm sure. And yeah. Italians as well. Yeah, all old I cultures. I think they have, like, yeah. Sira Bishirdun. I think they actually cook that in their own special way hmm. but it's a good keto keto food well, this, yeah but if you uh, don't have tilit that's <laughs> the thing right if you uh, but but isn't it aren't you undoing the the benefits of that by with all the chabi um isn't keto fats? just fat and oh keto maybe keto. i think you have paleo or yeah. something no like no no that. keto yeah. is just fat and protein and that's all uh calipache is huh. mm. And it's so feeling. I tried friendly. to mm. I tried to thread the needle and figure out a way. Having the conversation, twenty different ways yesterday to figure out a way to eat, if I could eat calipache regularly and lose weight, but there wasn't one. <laughs> Keto Nobody, is your way. 
that's the way <laughs> yeah but you're gonna be so high on cholesterol you're gonna have to be monitored by a <laughs> doctor yeah exactly <laughs> Thank you, guys. Uh, back uh, with a full edition of Rook on Thursday. This is our bonus podcast. Thanks for listening out there. We really appreciate you guys. It's full time for Rook for today. Our website, uh, rookmedia.com. Thanks to the amazing team who put this show together. Anahita, Pega, Roham, Omid, Paris, Sokove, and sound person Louise. Thank you to all of you out there supporting us and sharing our content. Do subscribe if you haven't done so already. Find me on Instagram at Giangomeshi. Mizunbashi. Mizunbashi.